everybody, this is Kathy from Kdale Handmade and I wanted to welcome you to my video tutorial today. Today we are going to be making the As You Wish Eda version. The As You Wish bag is by me and I'll link down in the pattern instructions or in, down in the video description where you can get the pattern. Um, and I am going to show you how to make it into an Eda bag. So an Eda bag is just basically this clear panel here with a board on the inside for where you can put pins or other little keepsakes that you want. This one I thought would be really fun to do as a National Parks um, pin board. And of course, I love all things cryptid, so I'm using the National Parks cryptid fabric from Riley Blake. Um, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make this panel. I am not going to show you how to put the entire bag together because I have two videos already that show that. So I will link to those videos if you wanted to reference those when you're making your bag. But this version, I will show you how we do this, how we make the little pocket here so that we can access our little Eda board. And yeah, it's super fun. It's super cute. And thank you for joining me and let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's go over the pieces that we're going to need to um, make this Eta bag version of the As You Wish, the front panel. So obviously we're going to need our fabric and I'm going to be using this. This is from Riley Blake. This is National Park Cryptid Bigfoot fabric. You're going to need some clear vinyl and I'm using this iridescent clear that I got from my little shindig. So you'll have some of that. You're gonna want some double-sided tape. Um, I recommend that. You could also use, you could try to use glue, but really I think that's gonna be more mess than it's worth. So I'm going to recommend double-sided tape. As you can see, mine has little bits of strings and fuzzies and whatever on it. So, all right. Obviously a zipper pull and some zipper tape. Uh, you will also need your as you wish pattern pieces for the cover for the front flap so that is the piece that looks like this you're going to need that and let's go ahead oh we're also going to use some foam core or you could also use this is really too big to hold <laughs> to show in the camera um, but this is a piece of foam core uh, it's probably about a quarter of an inch thick and it's something that I've been using as backdrops for photos for years and it's getting a little beat up. So I thought I'll use that for my board um, for the pins and then I will just get a new board for photos. Okay, so um, I was, let's see, I was also gonna say if you don't have foam core, you could also use um, cardboard uh, like from, a shipping box, something like that um, from Amazon or wherever you get shipments from. <laughs> you could use a piece of uh, cardboard from a box. You could also um, probably use, uh, uh, what am I trying to say, like a cereal box, even that kind of thin cardboard. I mean, that would be more thin. Um, so, you know, you just got to take that into consideration depending on where you're going to be using it. I don't think my foam board will be too thick for the front flap. Um, yeah, I think it'll be just fine. We're gonna go with it. And then the thing with Eda bags is I can always make another one. If I find out that one is too thick, I can always make another one because you just, you, it's an insert. So it's real easy to change out if you need to. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started on making this one. Okay, so from your main material, from your front pattern piece A, that is for the front flap, you're gonna cut out two pieces. And I have already interfaced these with SF-101. So we're going to take these and we're going to place them right sides together. Just lining them up. We don't have to clip them just yet, um, but we want them right sides together. Now what I've done is, to make it easy on myself, is I have cut another, or I've printed out another front piece, A pattern piece, um, at 85%. And I'm going to lay that 
just on top and that's just to help me to get the shape so I don't have to um, struggle with getting the curves or anything like that. Now obviously if you wanted to do just a square opening you could just measure it out with rulers. Um, this one I just want to mimic the shape of the flap so I'm going to just trace this pattern piece all the way around okay and I'm stopping right here at the top right before the curve right before it starts to curve out okay and then from there um, let me see let me grab my ruler here we want to just draw a line across the top now keeping in mind the design of this bag this piece is in the back this part right here is probably going to be at the top and so I'm going to move mine down so this is going to be right here is where my window is going to be because I'm using foam core obviously I don't want it to be that thick at the top I might even move it down a little bit more just to make sure it stays just on that front panel okay and I'm just going to draw a line straight across okay so now that we have that drawn what we're going to do is we're going to stitch around here and then straight across so we're stitching these two panels together ignore these these were just extra extra lines because I wasn't sure how far down I wanted to go but we're going to stitch across here and then all the way um, around around the panel <laughs> so stitch all the way around the panel all right so I have that stitched on I'm using black thread just to help make it easy to see my two panels are right sides together now what we need to do is we need to cut out this interior so I'm just going to cut I'm going to use my rotary cutter and I'm going to leave about three eighths to a half of an inch seam allowance I'm just going to follow that shape around And then you'll have these two cute little pieces left over. You can set those to the side. We might use these later. You also could use these in a small zipper pouch, you know, as a panel. So anyways, these are not wasted. You can use these still. But for this purpose, we're going to set them to the side. Now what we want to do is grab our scissors and we're going to snip into the corners as close as we can get without cutting our threads around here. I'm just going to cut some snips around the curve and then around this curve. And then finally into this last corner here, again, getting as close as I can without cutting that thread okay so now what we're going to do is we're going to turn it through so that it is right sides together or right sides out and this could be a little tricky <laughs> So this is where, here, let me do this. This might help. I'm going to use some double-sided tape. There we go. Some double-sided tape here. I'm just going to put another stretch strip here and then all the way at the top. 
you could use fabric glue you could use um, oops just clips you could take it to the iron board and just clip it around that way um, I am just going to do it this way because I think for me this is going to be the easiest You want to line up your panels as much as possible, as even as possible. Okay, now we're going to do the same thing with the bottom. So here for sure, I'm going to put a piece of double-sided tape all the way around. This is on the back side, so on the wrong side of the fabric. And again, you don't have to use double-sided tape. You don't have to do this step. Um, I'm just doing it for me. I think it's going to be easier to get things to um, go where I want them to go. Okay, so now we're just going to pull this one through. And here, I'm doing it from the wrong side, so it's going to look a little strange. Okay. As you can see how it's starting to look. We're starting to get that little bit of a window here. There we go. And this does feel a little backwards <laughs> to do it this way. If you have an easier way you could do it, um, or an easier way that you like to do this, by all means, go for it. Um, here, let me flip this over this way since I'm using that. So I'm just trying to push out that seam as much as possible and then I have the double-sided tape to help hold it in all in place. And I'm just going to do this the rest of the way around the panel. Okay, once I get that all turned through, now I'm going to take it over to the iron board and I'm just going to press these seams so that it lays nice and flat. All right, so that is all attached, all um, ironed down and everything. Now look at your panels. Since they are exactly the same on both sides, if there is one side that you prefer to be the outside of the bag, um, I think I'm going to use this one as the front side. So this will be the wrong side. So I'm just going to um, keep that in mind and I'm just going to leave it laying this way so that I don't forget this is the wrong side. <laughs> now what we need to do is we need to cut a piece of vinyl that's going to fill up this whole window space. So I'm just going to do a quick measurement and I probably I need a piece of vinyl that's probably about 10 by seven. And I will cut that and then I will trim it to shape once I get it over by my panel. So let's see here. Uh, there we go. Uh, that's probably about that. And again, I'm just guesstimating. This is going to be on the inside of the bag. No one's going to see it. So if my lines aren't perfect, um, I'm not worried about that. Okay. So now I can take it over here, and as we see, it is just the right shape. So now what I'm going to do, we need to sew this clear vinyl onto here to make the window. So I'm going to put some double-sided tape, again, right along this edge. I'm just going to put a little bit down each side and then some across the bottom. 
and I just want it to hold the vinyl while I'm sewing it down. Okay, there we go. Let me fix these clips here. All right, so removing the paper backing from the double-sided tape. Now we're going to attach the clear vinyl. If I can get this paper off. There we go. We're going to attach the clear vinyl to the back side of this panel. And then we're going to take it over to the sewing machine and we're going to sew it on. Okay, so here is my vinyl. I want to make sure that it's big enough all the way around. I'm going to trim it after I sew it. I just want to stretch it out here and make sure that I don't have actually I have to move it over a little bit Ooh. <laughs> without ah, without sticking to everything. All right, so this little piece of tape came off. I'm just going to stick that back down. Okay, let's try that again. I just want to make sure it's got enough on each side down here at the bottom. Okay. Now, just as an FYI, it's a little snug right here, but I think it'll be fine because I'm going to be sewing at an eighth of an inch right here. So if you would prefer to have a little bit of a larger space so yours isn't so um, close here, you can cut yours wider. And like I said, we're just going to trim it down at the end. Um, so now what we need to do is we're going to flip it over, make sure everything looks good. And we're going to take it to the sewing machine and top stitch right along this edge here at about an eighth of an inch away. And that's going to attach the clear vinyl to our panel. Okay, so I have that stitched all the way around. I stitched um, at about a four stitch length and about an eighth of an inch of the way around. So now what I need to do is just trim up the vinyl. And I'm probably going to go about a quarter of an inch away from the stitch line all the way around. And if you guys noticed, I did go back and cut myself a larger piece of vinyl. <laughs> it was just making me a little too nervous being that close to the stitch line. And I wanted a little extra to work with. So if you're thinking my vinyl grew off camera, that's because it did. Okay, so now that that is trimmed up, that is how our panel is looking. I'm probably going to just put a little bit of protector um, on this vinyl here, but I'm going to take it over to the iron board and just give it one more press here to make sure this is laying nice and flat. Um, but other than that, we are ready to move on to the next step. Okay, for the, for the next step, now what we're going to need is two of your Pattern Piece F, which is the full lining panel. So this is what we're going to use to make our um, zipper pocket so that we can slip our um, EDA panel inside of the, uh, inside of the, behind the clear vinyl, right? So now there's probably many ways to do this. This is just the way I'm doing it. And since this is just um, cotton woven material, I am fine with having a little extra layers here by adding two. Typically, we would just have one of this in the pattern, but because we're doing the Eda version um, and this is cotton woven, this is the way that I'm making it. Um, if you have another method that you prefer that works good for you, by all means, go ahead and do that. But so now what we wanna do 
is cut the panel in half. We're going to cut both panels in half um, so that we have access to our zipper, our, our Eda panel. So this is, um, this is going to be the back of the bag. Obviously this is the front of the bag. I'm just laying this here to show kind of placement of where we want the zipper. We don't want it down here because it'll be seen possibly um, through here and it probably would add bulk as well. So I'm going to probably cut my panels somewhere right in here. Um, and so I'm going to move this out of the way. And I was just using that for placement, like I said. So I'm just going to cut these right in half. Oop, just like that. All right, so now I have the two top halves here a top and a bottom and a top and a bottom okay so now what we want is to grab our zipper tape now i'm going to add let me just see how wide this is here right where i cut it so it's about um nine and three quarters inch wide so I'm going to make, I don't want my zipper to go all the way to the side because that's going to add bulk right there. I'm going to add zipper tabs to the ends here. So that was, what did I say, nine and three quarters. So I'm probably going to make this one maybe about eight and three quarters. Cut there. All right. I'm going to add the zipper pull as soon as I find where my handy dandy zipper jig went. Okay, so now that I have that attached, now what I need to do is grab some Actually, I might, no, I'm not going to do that. I was thinking I might use this because it's already interfaced. You know, these were the pieces that we cut out of the center, but I changed my mind because I want to use that on a different project. <laughs> so what I need to do is I just need to cut a couple little zipper tab pieces here. So let me grab my ruler. I'm going to cut these one and a quarter inch high by about two inches wide. I'm just going to cut straight across the bottom here. Um, two inches wide will be too big, but I'd rather have it be too large than too small because we can always trim it. And then that also just gives us a little extra something to hold on to. So what did I do here? One and a quarter inch wide, two inches tall, and I'm cutting four of these. So now what we're going to do, you can interface these if you want to. I don't think it's necessary for this purpose, um, but like I said, if you wanted to, you could do that. We're going to sandwich them in between the zipper. So they are right sides together with the zipper in the middle. I'm going to stick one on each side or a pair on each side, I should say. Sandwiching the zipper in the middle. Okay, now we're going to stitch across, across each end at a quarter of an inch. We're going to press the tabs back from the zipper and then top stitch along each folded edge. Okay, now that that is stitched on both sides, what we need to do is we need to make our zipper panel. So taking one of our bottoms and one of our tops, so it's going to go together like this. We're going to take our zipper and flip it down. So zipper teeth is down towards the bottom. And we're going to do the bottom panels first and then we'll repeat the process for the top panels. But we're going to take our other bottom panel now and flip it right sides. Oops, that's the other top. 
don't want to do that. There we go. All right. So lining it up and then clipping that in place all the way across, just like we did with the other piece. We're going to top stitch across at one quarter of an inch. So all the way across from here to here, stopping and starting, you know, a couple back stitches at each side, all the way across. Then we're going to flip both panels away from the zipper, press and top stitch along this folded edge. And then I'll be back. We're going to repeat the same thing for the, for the top piece. Okay. So there's that pressed away. Panels are wrong sides together. Now we're going to do the same thing for the top. And I just want to make sure I'm using the right piece. That looks like it matches and these and these. So this one now I'm going to align centered, clipping it in place against the other side of the zipper all the way across. And then I'm going to flip it over, attach the other top piece. Making sure that that is aligned as well. Okay, now we're going to do the same exact thing, stitching straight across here, flipping these panels up and away from the zipper, and then top stitching along the folded edge. All right, so that is what our panel looks like. That's the back side, that's the front side. Last thing we need to do here is just trim up these little tabs. And I'm just going to follow the curve here. Okay. Where'd that other one go? Hmm. Disappeared. <laughs> oh, there it is. Okay, got it. Okay, so that's how that's looking. Now, as you can see, this is going to be the inside that kind of that when you flip your panel up, that's going to be that back hidden pocket. And then we are going to have the zipper opening here so that we can slide our Eda panel inside there. And then on the front side, so if that was the flap, we're going to have our piece like this. So that is how that is looking so far. I think it's looking really good. Now, the next thing we need to do before we go any further is we need to, um, I'm going to follow the instructions in the original pattern and I'm going to finish attaching the back piece here with the um, zipper and the pocket. And then um, I will do that and I'll come back and show you how we attach this to this panel. All right, guys, so I've got that done. I've got my pocket here done. So that's my back pocket. Um, I attached this. I did not top stitch this part yet. Not yet. We're gonna do that in a second. So you can just finger press it, but you're not gonna top stitch it yet. Now you're going to take your panel that we completed earlier with the zipper, um, the right side of the zipper, you're gonna flip it so you're looking at the back side of the zipper. So these panels now are right sides together. And I'm gonna move the zipper to the middle just to make sure it doesn't get in the way of anything. Okay, and then I'm going to just match everything up, clip it all the way around, and then I'll flip it over to make sure I like the placement make sure that it matches up since I, I did the front a little different and I added that clear vinyl panel. I just want to make sure that everything is laying right and I don't have any issues. Let's see, I'm also going to move this zipper pull to the middle.
Okay, so I don't have to clip all the way around the bottom here because we're going to be turning it through and this part can stay open. Um, but I am going to flip it over and just make sure, as you can see here, this down here is not lined up perfectly. And it's a little bit shorter on this side as well. But I'm not going to stress out about that too much. I could scoot it over a little bit. Let's see. Maybe I'll move it over just a little bit here. And then adjust this side over here. Okay, so once you get it just how you like it, now what we're going to do, just like on the original pattern, we're just going to sew around here, do, 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 right, curve to curve. We're going to leave this part unsewn. We're going to curve all the way around. We're going to turn it through and then top stitch along this outer edge. So I will go ahead and stitch this. I'll turn the panel through. Um, top stitch it and then I'll come back to show you what it looks like. All right guys, so here's our panel so far. Um, this is pretty much done for now. What I did was I turned it through. I did add a magnetic snap um, to the inside here and if you're going to do that, I would recommend doing that before you sew all this together um, because, let me see if I can Oh, I can't do it because I already stitched it down. But anyways, I had to reach all the way to the inside, inside of here to make that hole and attach the snap. So I would recommend doing that before you sew it all together. Um, it was okay, but it would have been easier if I did that beforehand. <laughs> okay, so I just wanted to show you, here's what it's looking like. Um, I did top stitch this after I got this part all together. I did top stitch this right here. So we have the back of our bag. We have our back pocket. Then this is the bottom here. This is the flap like this. And then when you flip it up, there is the panel here where you can reach to the inside. That's where we're going to put our Eda panel and our pins and all that and then this is just an easy access point so if you ever want to change it out or maybe one of your pins becomes loose or um, you know whatever you have easy access okay so at this point I'm going to put this to the side I am going to finish making the bag according to the pattern instructions the original pattern instructions. I have two other videos out there making the As You Wish bag, so you can follow the written instructions or either one of those videos. That will help you to finish the bag. Once I get this all finished, then I will come back and I'll show you how we make this um, panel here. And we will attach the pins, stick it together, and we'll be done. Okay, I'll see you in a minute. All right, so here is my bag so far. I think it looks really cute. So here's the back pocket. I added grommets and some ring connectors on the side that I'm going to attach my straps to. And then I have the snap closure. And then right here is how I'm going to get my Eda pocket in. And then of course I have the hidden pocket and then inside, I just did it plain. I did not add any slip pockets or zipper pockets on this version. Um, so now we need to make the board that goes inside here that we can put our pins on. So I decided, I'm just gonna set this to the side. I decided at the last minute, cause I had, the, <laughs> I just used the last of my SF-101. So I think I'm going to use this cardboard instead just because it's on the flap of the bag i think using something a little bit more thin would be better than that foam core um, that's pretty thick so i'm going to use this so what we need to do is we need to cut a piece of cardboard that will fit right in here so obviously it's not going to be this big i'm just giving myself kind of a 
a marker to start with. I will have to make, I'm sure that I will have to make a couple edits, a couple additional cuts, not edits. <laughs> this isn't a document, it's not a video. All right, so I'm just gonna cut this around following that shape. Okay, same here. I'm cutting to the inside because I already know it's gonna be too big. So I'm gonna have to cut it shorter or smaller anyway. So now I can kind of see, let me open it up like this. I can kind of see it's almost the same size. Um, it actually might not be too far off, but I know that it's gonna be too tall. So I'm gonna cut off a little bit. And I would suggest as you're doing your cuts, make small cuts. Um, you know, if you need to trim off a little bit, trim off a little bit. Don't make it too big because if you trim off too much, then you're going to have to start all over. That would not be very fun. All right, so I'm just going to try a couple more, just kind of eyeballing it like this. And I mean, that looks pretty close. The only thing is I'm not sure if it needs to be a little bit smaller because of the seam allowance when we top stitched right here. Um, so let me know. I'm just going to test it out and because of the shape I'm afraid I'm gonna have to bend it a bit to get it in so let's see here and this might this might still be too big but at least I can kind of see how it's gonna fit inside there Yeah, you can see that's still, it's almost there, a little bit too tight. I gotta cut a little bit more off the side. So I'm going to kind of pull this out. Now, I will say, if you don't like the fact that you have to bend it because of the shape, you know, it's a little wider here than it is up here. Um, you could always make your window opening smaller and square um, so that it would just be a straight slide in you don't you won't have to worry about it but i wanted to follow the shape of the flap so that's why mine is going to have to be folded and i'm okay with that because once I get it in, I'm going to have fabric over this board. And once I get it in, it's not going to be going anywhere. So it's fine. It's all good. All right. So once I get it in. Hey, that looks pretty good, actually. Okay. So that looks like it fits really well in there. Okay, so now what I need to do is I need to pull this board back out and I'm going to cover it with fabric. There we go. All right, so I'm gonna put the bag to the side and I'm going to grab some of my fabric that I used. Let's see if I have some pieces that are big enough. This one maybe. Okay. So what you want to do is you just want to cover your board. So you could use, it's almost like upholstery. If you've ever done upholstery, you're just going to be pulling it around to the back side and securing it. So you could use whatever method you prefer. I'm actually going to, I'm looking at the prints here, this cave dragon. I want it to be right side up. So I'm going to flip my paper over or flip my fabric over. And then I'm just going to just do a rough trim of the fabric around the board. I want enough extra that I can pull it 
over to the back side of the cardboard, but not so much where it creates a ton of bulk. Okay, so you could use a, a glue gun if you have a glue gun. I'm going to try Fabric Tech. I do have a glue gun, but I'm not so sure I want to use it on this. So, actually, hold on. This one is not opened yet. That's why it's not coming out. <laughs> All right, let's try this one. I'm just going to add a little bit of glue here, kind of smear it around just a little bit to help to help that hold in place. Okay, flipping it over to the front. I can kind of see how that's going to look. Okay, now we need to pull the glue over to the back side or pull the fabric over to the back side, I should say. So I'm putting glue on the cardboard and then I'm just pulling this fabric over to the back. Now fabric tech dries pretty quickly, so you shouldn't have to hold it too long, but I'll just hold it here for a couple seconds as I work around the board. And I think that's gonna hold it well enough that I don't have to worry about pulling out my glue gun. Add some glue here because I'm at the corner. So you're just going to do this same thing all the way around the whole board, just gluing and holding your fabric, pulling it tight. I'm just going to add a clip right here to help that fabric hold. Since it is the corner, I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Once I get all of that glued on, and it's drying nice, so it should only take not too long for it to completely cure. Well, for it to hold long enough for our purpose anyway. Um, that's what the front of our board is looking like, so that's perfect. Now the last thing I will say I'm going to do just to help to hold this in place is I'm going to just go along this edge here with some duct tape. And I think that's just gonna help to hold it all down, hold it all in place. And then I won't have any worries. And my pins will still go through the duct tape, so there's no problems there either. sides and this is the back of the board no one's going to see it so it doesn't have to be pretty it just has to be functional okay then the last piece there across the bottom All right, there is our board. <laughs> That's so cute. That looks great. Okay, so now let me pull out my pins. I have a whole bag here full of pins that I got on vacation. All right, 
So, I have Arches, I have Capo Reef, Bryce Canyon, Zion, Canyonlands, Colab Canyons, I've got stickers, all sorts of stuff. Okay, so let me get the stickers out of the way. Postcards, bookmark, <laughs> I got all the stuff. Okay, so here are all of my pins. And now I just got to stick them on. All right, so I have these rubber backings on all of the pins. They might fall off, but, yep, <laughs> that's okay. I will, um, once we get them in the, the pocket, I will reattach any that might have fallen off. But there are my pins from all the national parks that we hit over the summer. Um, and actually, I will say another option because if these are going to pop off a lot, because this, I mean, this is pretty thick, so they don't have much to hold on to. You could do a dab of um, hot glue over the end, and that would take away that point. And it would also help to keep your pins on the board. Now, if you don't want to remove your pins ever, then, I mean, I guess you still could. You just have to do a little work to get them off. <laughs> Okay, actually, I think before I stick that in, I'm going to get my glue gun out and I'm going to do that because I can see that these are going to give me some struggles. So let me get my glue gun. I will put dabs on all of these and then we'll stick the board into the bag. All right, all of the little pins have a little dab of glue on them. And, yep, they're all cooled enough, so we're good. All right, so now we get to stick it in, stick the panel in. All right, so we'll have to fold it a little bit. all the way in and oh, one of them popped out all right hold on Ooh. hold on two popped out all right so let me just stick let's see which ones were these there was one right there I think Colab Canyon I can see where the yep there's where the there and I'm not worried about the back side because that little glue dot, I can feel it on the back of the panel. So I know that little glue dot is still there. So my pokey pin goes right into the glue dot. All right, there we go. Zip that closed. And Another little, there we go. There is the bag. It's so cute. I love it. Yeah, super cute. All right, guys. So this is the As You Wish made as an Ida bag with that front panel. And I think it's just perfect for holding all of my vacation pins. All right, so thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial. I hope you have fun making an Eda bag. If you make an Eda version of the As You Wish, please post it in my group. Tag me. I'd love to see how you make it. And um, 
yeah, I guess that's it. Guys, thank you again, once again, for joining me. And I hope you have a great day and you go sow something fun.